Hello everybody and welcome back to Voices in My Head, the podcast where Basil talks about audiobooks and everything having to do with audiobooks. My name is Feely and this is my brother Neely. Hello. This is my brother Buffin. Hello. And this is my brother Berthold. Hello. And we are the leprechauns that live under Basil's house and we're also his administrative assistants and we ensure that nothing really bad happens to him. And this is episode seven. That's right, episode seven which is part three of three. That makes it the third one. He said third. I did not. I said third. That's what we said you said. You shouldn't talk about your poo on the air like that. I'm not talking about my poo. I'm talking about the episode where Jeffrey Kafer comes out and talks with Basil. It's the last one. It was a three-part thing. There was three parts of three, and that makes the third one today. I think you need to go over your vocabulary, brother. Shut up and run the show. Software-wise, do you have any recommendations yeah. software-wise? There's a lot of talk about, you know, Audacity is free, but hey, I could pay 2000 bucks and get this. Uh, I don't recommend, especially for the new narrator, I don't recommend spending a ton of money on software. I'm not a huge, <clears throat> excuse me, not a huge fan of Audacity, but you can get, if you like the Pro Tools experience, you can get Reaper for 60 bucks. Mm. and that's cheap oh yeah it's not you know it's not thousand dollars like pro tools is um i actually i started an audition actually i started when it was cool edit i'm cool. old mm. cool edit pro i'm old i think my original copy of cool edit pro was pirated <laughs> <laughs> you got um, it from from napster didn't you <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably a usenet news group wow i'm dating myself okay Anyway, uh, I use Reaper now. I like it a lot. Um, it's very, very functional, very customizable. Mm. Um, but it doesn't have to be, it doesn't start off with a huge learning curve. You can sort mm. of hop in and if you know basically what you're doing, you can do stuff in mm. it. Um, it's for Mac and Windows. Mm -hmm. So um, Audacity is a decent program to start in. If you're really, really just starting out, if you have no right. idea how to do audio, because it's really, really simple. Right, right. By design. Right. So simple, free. You could figure out, and if you're, if and if you turned out that you don't like to be an audiobook narrator, right, then <clears throat> you haven't lost anything. Well, hopefully you've spent some money on a microphone. Yes. But you're right. Yeah, software-wise, you've. Yeah. So, so in general, should a should a new narrator go out there and spend a ton of money on microphone and preamp and new software and all this stuff? Or this is my microphone. It's a hundred and fifty dollar microphone now. Mm. I started out with this microphone, and I still record it today. After two hundred and twenty five audiobooks, I still use it. Mm. It's an Audio Technica AT thirty thirty five. Perfect. It's not expensive. And I can't hear because I'm not plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the point is, is no, you don't need to spend a buttload of money. Um, please don't because there's no reason to. Um, look at the, uh, the, the audio technical line of mics. They're good mics mm -hmm. and they're super quiet. Right. We're talking about the noise floor. These are super quiet mm. mics. Um, I think the AT2020 is a direct U has a USB version. Mm. I mean, there's two flavors. Anyway, the AT2020 is even cheaper. I think it's 99 bucks. Oh, wow. And it's fine. Right. It's totally right. fine. As long as you got a clean USB port and a good yes. cable, you're set without having to have a preamp and all the other stuff. Exactly. The line. <clears throat> and my preamp is actually a Focusrite 2i2, which is 150 bucks. Mm. So... In terms of microphone and a preamp, I've got like three hundred dollars, right? And I've done, and that's the stuff I had when I began. And you know, that's a, that's a great thing to, to to mention. I've talked to some other guys as well uh, that you know, same kind of thing. It's like you know, I haven't really updated. I've still got Windows ninety eight running on my system, and it <laughs> works. It works. You know, I'm not touching it. <laughs> I went through uh, a couple months ago. I borrowed a, a TLM one hundred three. Mm. It's a, whatever, it's a $800 microphone from a friend. And I didn't like it because it had more hiss. It had more self noise as they call it. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I tried an ECAD 100S, which 
supposedly a super quiet self noise, but I guess the one I got was a bum mic and it had throughout mm. the whole thing. Wow. And so I just, I, gave the bike back to my friend and I sent the, the ECAD back to Sweetwater, whatever it was. Huh. And I said, you know, there's nothing wrong with a mic I've been using for five years. Right. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There, there you go. There you go. Just keep using the same thing. As long as it works, yeah. the customer on the other end is not going to know what mic you had. No, no, so. no, they're not. Wow. So at, have you had any, any, any nightmare experiences while you've been narrating? Um, I had a near nightmare experience Yeah, and this gets back to pre-reading, mm. which you were supposed to remind me about. I'm um, reminding you. So I'm doing a book called area 51 and this is through ACX and the author wanted it done. I think it was fairly quickly. And I said, Hey, I emailed him saying, Hey, I don't know if I'm going to have time to pre-read it. Can you tell me, do I need to know anything? Mm -hmm. You know, tell me about the characters, accents, dialects, right. Mannerisms, whatever. What do I need to know? And so I'm reading the book. Main character, page 356 says, I'm going to the store, whatever. He said in his Canuck accent. What? Where did that come from? <laughs> this is the main character of the book. First of all, what the oh, yeah. is a Canuck accent? <laughs> and what do I do now? So I emailed him and said, hey, here's what happened help. What do I do? What do you think? What's your take? He said, Oh man, I wrote the book 20 years ago. I had no idea that line was in there. Just don't read that line about his Canuck accent. <laughs> Bullet dodged. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Nightmare avoided. Lucky. Yeah. 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 I, because he would have had every right to say the Canuck accent is a very important part of his character that needs to happen. Right. Right. Cause that's not micromanaging. That's paying attention to the damn text. Right. Right. So yeah. Read the book ahead of time, people. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you never know, so they may stick in that Canuck accent. <laughs> you know, I, I actually had an exact, a very similar experience last week of all Oh, things. really? And I've been at this for several years. I shouldn't have these experiences. <laughs> but I pre-read the book except for the last two chapters. <laughs> and the, very, the prologue and the epilogue were both in the voice of an editor slash of this guy's diary kind of thing. And it turned, and I had done the first part in a British accent, read the whole epilogue in a British accent, and the signature <laughs> at the end said, the main character's daughter at this. And I was like, oh, I just did oh, it in a no. male British accent for <laughs> the whole first and last chapter. So I had to go back and re-record him. And my, my proofer, who had already turned in most of the proofs, except for that last thing, had to return in wow. because all the timings were thrown off for his corrections. Wow. To, and it's like, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. To wow. radio. So, what, so you what you're saying is you won't be working for that publisher anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just I'm well, at, just at least that proofer may say, uh, I don't want him. Yeah. <laughs> Assign him to someone else. Right. So um now you've gotten through you get you've done a lot of books. I mean, you got what, two hundred and some books out there you're in the uh, what was that uh, thing that uh, i brought up the other day on on facebook about you know the superstars and the mega stars and and you're right up there you're you're well past the journeyman level and yeah but uh, you know you're... what i'm not at the simon vance level or the scott oh, no. level. i got a long way to go oh, yeah you got about 800 more titles to go to yeah, exactly there. so literally 800 more titles. yes yes um but you've got a lot of experience behind you okay so in in a single paragraph or a single statement, what would be your most, what, what would be the advice you would give to someone who wants to start out at this, who seems to have the chops for it? What would you tell them? Slow down. Mm. And I don't mean in your reading. I mean, in your pursuit of this as a career, slow down. You can, if you are, and I made the same mistake, which is why I can safely give it. If you are, if you want to do this, do not rush out and cut a demo. Do not get your stuff on up on ACX quickly. Get some coaching, get some training, mm. get your sound analyzed. Make sure you're able to deliver. Uh, make sure your editing is good. And don't think, and don't just say, yeah, my editing's good. No, get another opinion and mm. listen to that opinion. Don't look for validation look for ways that you can improve through feedback from others. Mm. So you can actually do a lot of harm 
by sending out demos that are not ready for prime time to publishers. Right. So if you have done a book and you're like, cool, I'm going to start pimping Blackstone and Tantor. I would caution against that unless you really are ready. And that opinion comes from somebody else because mm. these publishers will remember you. And that's right. true of anything. Right. This is actually true of the voiceover world in general. If you send out demos before they are ready, before you're ready, agents and publishers will remember you. And when they get another demo, and even if you've improved a thousand percent, you very well may go like go to the trash pile because they remember you right. sent them a crappy demo. So I know it's exciting and I know ACX has opened up a world of opportunities to do this, but slow down. Do what you need to do because this is a business first and in right. art second. Right, right. Now, uh, you've got the deal where you're doing uh, the uh, uh, FAFCON or FAFCAMP uh, talks. I heard you <clears throat> mention that before. You want to you pimp that a little bit? Oh, I'm going to be at FAFCAMP doing an hour session called How to Not Suck at ACX. Very cool. Um, and it's um, just... It's expanding on a little bit what I've talked about here, um, how to find good titles, how to how to factor in rates, how to deal with it if you're a union employee. Uh, mm. employee. If you're a union member, there's a lot of things to know there. Right. Um, none of it is rocket science. It's it's easy. You just got to know. So I'm just going to expand on that. It's fafcamp.com. Uh, and uh, I don't even know if it's sold out or whatever, but if I, I'm hoping to see some of you there. So, yeah. yay. That that'll be pretty cool. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. You know, that's, you're going to Faf Camp. I'm not going to Faf Camp this year, but I might the next. Oh you know, well, I'm not doing it next year. You're out of luck. Oh, oh well, that's, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. I'm I'm, I'm going to APAC this. Year. You're going to APAC. That's so, the one so, you need to go to. Yeah. So sorry. um, those of you who are going to APAC, let me give a word of advice. Bring business cards, but don't hand them out. Mm. Wait for somebody to ask you for one. The worst thing I saw at, at APAC a couple of years ago was we did a session and I had Brian Barney and uh, the head of the John uh, I can't remember John Marshall no well no uh, one of the guys from Tantor and mm. uh, Emil Day from from Audible mm. all talking about casting we were done with the session we were mobbed with people handing out business cards here's my business card here's my business mm. okay people you're not going to get hired on a business card right you're going to get hired by forming a genuine relationship and having a conversation with people. So bring business cards, but don't hand them out like they're Tic Tacs. Right. So that's my little APAC advice. Be a human. Don't be a, a marketer. Just go have fun. Meet people. Go have fun. Have a drink. Meet people. Chat it up. And don't be a wallflower. Mm. You know, a lot of people say, I didn't learn anything. I didn't get nothing from APAC. Well, because you didn't talk to anybody. Right, right. You got to be out there. Speaking of talking to people at APAC, yeah. you've got the naughties that uh, you, Johnny <laughs> Heller, and a couple other guys organized together. Uh, what's that all about? Yeah, so Melissa Exelberth, Johnny Heller, and I came um, had the idea of, so the night, Thursday night, I believe, the Audis are the big um, uh, award show for mm -hmm. the Oscars of the audiobooks, right, uh, right. audiobook world. Well... 90% of the people who go to APAC are there and weren't nominated for an Audi. Mm. All right. If you want to go, go have fun at the Audis. For those of us who don't want to pay X hundred dollars to get into the, the Audis, we reserve the upper level of Mustang Harry's and we have the naughties, the not Audis. And it's not a slam against those people who are, who go to the Audis or who are nominated. Right. Um, because it actually becomes the de facto after party of the Audis. Mm. So we're all hanging out there in t-shirts and jeans and, you know, dino porn t-shirts and having drinks. And then everybody shows him at tuxedos holding awards. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's just a good time. It's just everybody hanging out and it's a, it's a little bit different from the mixers because with the mixers and such, there's always sort of this uh, pressure is the wrong word, but that's kind of like the varsity and the JV teams going to the same party together. Yeah, there's that. I mean, and the, the publishers and producers are hanging out. And you kind of got to be on your best behavior. And you're, there's a little bit of schmoozing going on. The audience is a lot more relaxed. And I don't know why, because the same people go. Mm. But it's just totally chill. Everybody's hanging out, having cool. fun, doing drinks and having food. And it's just a, 
it's so much more relaxed. And a lot of people have said that it's it's one of their favorite parts of APAC. So, well, I'm looking forward to it. I'll tell you that. I, yeah, I mean, if you're not going to go to Audi, the Audis, and I recommend everybody go to the Audis at least once, especially if you're nominated, um, okay. you'll come on over to the Naughties. We'll we'll hang out and then we'll party with the uh, the winners and losers. Uh, there are no losers. We'll hang out with the winners. And the sub winners. And the nominees. The nominee. There you go. The other nominees afterward. <laughs> and a good time will be had by all. Well, that sounds like a terrific time to have out there. And, yeah. uh, and you know, you, you've given a lot of really good advice out there. Uh, and, you. and, you know, one of the things that I really appreciate, too, is and that people need to jump into who want to be part of this business is to get into those Facebook groups that are uh, uh, active, actively... Yeah touting some of this because you can get a lot of advice from a lot of serious veterans of this business it, yourself yep. johnny dick uh dick hill sean pratt all these guys that are out there oh, yeah. who have hundreds and in some cases thousands of titles yeah. out there they have eons of experience uh eons 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 especially you know look at look at dick and johnny just right there oh, yeah. you, you have at oh, yeah. least the last thousand years and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Please don't slap me down, Sir Simon. <laughs> you know, I learn but, something every day on those groups. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. yeah. And it's a lot of fun to participate in there and, and to, yep. to chat around. Absolutely. So, uh, any parting comments? No. Okay. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing... Oh, stop the, the amazing Jeffrey Kafer who yeah. uh, is uh, out there bantering and witting, wittingly teaching and leading and being a, up. a, a few people in the process. And there you go. There you go. But that's okay along the way, because yes. if they get pissed, it means they were jerks anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So uh, jerks. That's, that's it. And there we go. So uh, say goodbye, Jeffrey. Bye, Jeffrey. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming at yeah, all, did you? No. <laughs> no, you a genius, man. Thank you very much for listening to Voices in My Head. This is the show where Basil talks about all that stuff about the audio books and interviews people about it. And today he was talking with the Kafer, who is kind of like the Chuck Norris of audio books. Did you ever notice how Chuck Norris, he like, you know, can push up the world with his hands and, and he's superhuman and indefatigable? And Jeffrey Kafer is like that when it comes to audiobooks. He's so full of all the audiobook aura stuff that he's like, he's like a great big dirigible balloon that floats up into the sky and can tell you the weather like a weather balloon and get mistaken for a spaceship and then get shot down by, by air force. No one's going to shoot down Jeffrey. Jeffrey's a nice fella. Why would you even say something like that? Well, I'm not saying they shoot him down. I'm saying they shoot down a weather balloon because they mistake it for a UFO. Have you ever been abducted by a UFO? I've never been abducted by a UFO. I have. Yeah, I have. I know I have. That's how I learned how to speak Chinese. You speak Chinese? Yeah, and German and Russian and, and some other languages that I'm not even sure what they are, but I sure do speak them. You learned that when you got abducted by... Aliens in a spaceship? Yep, I sure did. I also learned how to make eggs benedict. Aliens make eggs benedict? Yeah, where do you think that sauce comes from? Okay, anyway, this is this is Neely signing out for my brothers. And uh, bye, copyright 2013. Bye, Basil Sands. You learned eggs benedict in a spaceship? Yeah, where do you think they got that sauce?